In this video, we're going to see the science behind the optimal rest duration for muscle hypertrophy. In addition, we're going to see some practical recommendations by a special guest that I have invited today, which is a pro natural bodybuilder. So make sure to stick to the end of the video so you don't miss that. Now, let's start with what was proven by science. First, a review from 2017 investigating this topic found that resting for one minute or more is more effective for muscle growth compared to resting for less than a minute. I believe that this finding is very important because it sets a lower limit for rest duration that can be used as a starting point for everyone in the gym. So one minute is better than less than a minute for hypertrophy. However, specifically for muscle hypertrophy, many coaches propose longer rests. So do we have any evidence on that? Well, yes there are, and many of them were included in the review I just mentioned. In regards to that, authors concluded that both short and long rests are effective. However, there might be an advantage to use long rest intervals. But how strong is that evidence? Can you get better results by resting a lot more than a minute? And is this the same for all muscle groups? Let's answer all those questions. To my knowledge, seven studies have investigated this correlation and the results are mixed. Some of them favored the short duration rests, some the opposite, and one showed no differences between conditions. However, if we split those studies into studies with large muscle groups and compound lifts and others with smaller muscle groups and isolated exercises, things start to get clearer. In studies with large muscle groups like the quadriceps and compound lifts like deadlifts, squats and bends, there was a clear trend favoring long rests around 3 minutes. In the remaining studies that were on small muscle groups like the triceps and biceps and isolated exercises only, there was either no differences between conditions or an effect favoring the short rest intervals. And this looks reasonable because isolated exercises will only fatigue the targeted muscles while compound lifts will also fatigue the accessory muscles involved in the movement, like your back on the squats for example, the cardiovascular system and the central nervous system. Thus, on the compound lifts, you have to wait until all of these are recovered to continue your sets. However, I question these results because I see a catch on the studies with the compound lifts and also very concerning limitations on the studies with the isolated exercises. Starting with the studies on the isolated exercises, the first one used completely different training intensities in each condition. They compared high volume 20 reps to failure with low volume 8 reps to failure. They also didn't specify how many sets they did in each condition. And last but not least, the subjects were recreational gymnastics athletes, which are typically more accustomed to high volume training and thus more adapted to one of the two conditions they did, the 20 reps condition. Similarly, the second and third study used a different number of sets, intensity and rest intervals between the conditions they compared. So it's really hard to know which of these variables affected the results. In a study design, in order to test the effects of a variable on a program, you need to have all the other variables steady. And this is exactly what the other four studies on the large muscle groups did. For these reasons, I cannot trust any of these results and this is my concern with these three papers. The rest papers on the large muscle groups had a lot better design, but there is a catch. You see, the only purpose of rest intervals is interset recovery. And recovery is highly affected by cardiovascular endurance, aka aerobic capacity. The more aerobic capacity you have, the less rest you need. However, none of these studies measured the aerobic capacity of the participants. So, they were investigating a training variable that is highly dependent on aerobic capacity and they didn't measure the aerobic capacity of the participants. Three of the four studies had untrained individuals and the Schoenfeld study had resistance trained men but with unspecified aerobic capacity. So, we can rightfully assume that all participants were untrained in terms of aerobic endurance. This way, if we want to accurately phrase the results of these studies, we should say that men with probably low aerobic capacity have better hypertrophy gains with rests around 3 minutes when training large muscle groups and compound lifts. However, these results might differ a lot in individuals with a decent aerobic capacity. Aerobic capacity is one of the most important aspects of human performance and health and if you're not training it, you're missing a huge superpower of your body. 
If you hate running and only want to lift, I promise you I've been there. However, there are specific reasons why most people hate running and in one of my previous videos I explained the simple truth behind them that convinced most of my clients to start running, at least every once in a while. So make sure to check that video too. Now back to the results of the rest intervals, regarding the isolated exercises there is not much data that we can rely on. However, based on the review I mentioned earlier, a 1 minute to 90 seconds rest would be a great starting point for these exercises. Longer rest intervals might be beneficial for some, however keep in mind that in the Fingertal study from 2017, when they compared 30 seconds to 2.5 minutes rest on the triceps, a small muscle group, they didn't find any difference between conditions. So resting more than a minute to 90 seconds on isolated exercises will not harm you, but it might not add to your gains too. However, this all sounds a bit theoretical and many times in practice things are different. For this reason, I invited a pro natural bodybuilder to share his point of view on this topic. Hi Bill, uh, thanks for being here. Hey man, thanks for having me. So based on your long time experience, how long do you recommend people to rest for and why? Yeah, it's a good question. So my current recommendations are dependent somewhat on the exercise. So for isolations, I'd recommend around one to two minutes for most compound movements and most other exercises, two to three minutes. And then for some of the big heavy compounds like squats, deadlifts, more like three to five minutes. And I think that rest is a little bit of a nuanced topic because there are basically two factors at play. You have your time efficiency and your the amount of productive volume that you're able to accomplish. And there's a trade-off between the two as you increase or decrease your rest intervals. So when rest intervals are very short, you may be more time efficient in that you're saving a bit of time in the gym. But... If your rest is too short, you won't be able to perform as many reps with the same amount of weight, which means your volume is going to go down if you look at volume from the perspective of, you know, sets times reps times weight lifted. And you can you might notice this if you're, you know, if you're taking really, really short rests and your rep performances are dropping way off. So but the problem, obviously, is if you take really long rests, is that you could, you know, you you are being less time efficient, even though, you know, you are ultimately getting a diminishing return in the amount of reps that you're able to get out of that. So the payoff in terms of productive volume decreases after that. Yeah, this, this totally makes sense. So uh, how long would you say that the rest is too short? Are there any indications based on your experience for that? Yeah, so what I like to look at is your rep performance across sets. And I usually like reps to say to stay fairly stable across your sets. A little bit of a drop is okay. So say we're aiming for, you know, three sets of 12 and your reps go from 12 to 11 to 10 across your sets. I think that's totally fine. But if you find your reps are say going from 12 to 8 to 4, then you may be resting not enough and you'd probably want to try increasing the rest. In general, you know, I think the goal is to be able to eyeball your rest periods or know basically when you're ready to go. So in general, although I give fairly, you know, I gave those recommendations in practice, I usually just rest until I feel ready to go and I know that I'm gonna be able to maintain performance. So after that, naturally, the next thing that I want to ask is whether he had developed any practices to know if a rest period is too long. I think the issue that comes up with really long rest periods is we were talking about how rest is this trade-off between time efficiency and productive volume. So if you take a little bit longer rest, you might get a, a little bit more productive volume per set. But if your rest periods get long enough, you may as well just do more sets and you know that will increase your volume as well in fact it'll increase it even more because maybe by resting an extra five minutes you might get one more rep but then if you did another set of 10 that's going to be even more volume so i think that 
at some point there comes a trade-off where you may as well just do more sets or just leave earlier. You know, I think I'm a big proponent of keeping workouts as short as possible because I think that a big problem people run into with sustainability is that they just feel that they don't have the time to fit things in or their life gets stressful. Following that, based on the fact that aerobic capacity affects recovery, I wanted to ask what his thoughts are on the effects of aerobic capacity on hypertrophy training. The way I look at it is that there is a threshold of aerobic capacity that you kind of want to have at minimum for hypertrophy training. And basically that is just to allow you to actually complete the workouts in a reasonable amount of time. So I think that the bar is relatively low. You don't need to be a marathoner and you probably don't even need very much actual dedicated cardiovascular training. But I also can see that if someone is really unfit, that they might have trouble, you know, even just getting the sets done. And, you know, the classic is the obese powerlifter who has to take a nap between sets. Yeah. <laughs> And the last thing that I want to ask is whether he has any tips from keeping the workouts from getting too long. Yeah, so a couple of tricks for hacking your rest periods is, would be to use supersets. I think that's a really neat trick. So basically, the idea is that you take two exercises and you alternate them. So one set of each, say, you take bicep curls and, you know, skull crushers for the triceps. So you do one set of biceps, one set of triceps, one set of biceps, one set of triceps. And the idea is that while you're training your biceps, your triceps are resting. And this works especially well for antagonist muscle groups like the biceps and triceps or maybe chest and back movements where by necessity, the other muscle group is forced to rest while you're performing the other exercise. But you can also do other supersets as long as you're not using the same muscles. So like if you were doing your bicep curls, but you're also doing like a leg, a leg press or something like that, that's not going to interfere. So that can be a great way to save on time without sacrificing performance because your muscle is ultimately still resting in between. So you're basically just making use of your rest period efficiently. If someone's a very beginner and has trouble you know, keeping track of their rest periods and their workouts are getting long. You can time your rest periods, you know, even just starting off with the guidelines that we've given and just using a stopwatch or your, you know, your watch as just a little guideline for you just so that things don't get out of hand and you stop sitting around cracking jokes with your buddies. Yeah. I have to say that I really like this last advice because it's something that anyone can implement in their programs. So my practical recommendations based on the current data and Dr. Swall's take on this matter are the following. A reasonable amount of rest intervals for isolated movements, which is partially based on evidence, is around 1 to 2 minutes. For compound movements and exercises that involve big muscle groups in general, longer rests around 3 minutes make sense and have been shown by the literature to increase hypertrophy in individuals with untrained aerobic capacity. However, remember that a decent amount of cardiovascular endurance will probably reduce the rest you need between sets, leading you to do more volume within the same training session. This of course is true especially for sets from 8 reps and above, which is a reasonable range for hypertrophy, and not heavy lifts below 6 reps that cause central nervous system fatigue and are not proposed for hypertrophy gains anyway. Make sure to use your own performance during your workouts as evidence to customize your rest intervals. A sharp decrease in your ability to perform the repetitions of your program might be a good indicator that your rests are too short. And last but not least, a good way to manage your training time while resting adequately is to use supersets like the ones described by Dr. Swall. Now that you have a good idea of where to start with your rest intervals, it is essential to know how many sets you should do per week to optimize muscle growth. You can find that out in this next video.